It's a titanic project that's just coming to life. A city designed to be futuristic has been built in Central Asia. In Turkmenistan, billions of dollars have been spent on the construction of Arkadag, the city of the future. A display of wealth and high-tech know how that remains deserted for the time being. In this new episode of Looking For, I invite you to discover this boomtown that's in danger of turning into a true ghost town. The atmosphere is solemn on June 29th. It's a big day for Serdar Berdimokhamedov, President of Turkmenistan, as he inaugurates the new face of the country, the new city of Arkadag. For the occasion, a lavish ceremony with a military parade and a concert in the main square was organized. Glory to Arkadag and Serdar, glory to the Turkmen leader, chanted participants dressed in traditional Turkmen garb, reported AFP reporters on site the day of the event. Nothing seems too good or too big for this city, conceived as a revolution in this former Soviet state wedged between Afghanistan, Iran, the Caspian Sea and Kazakhstan. Located 30 kilometers from the capital, in the south of the country, the city has a proud appearance. It features several hundred residential buildings and many infrastructures, most of which have already been completed. These include administrative buildings, a horse circus, a research center, and cultural venues. Health and education are not left out either, with medical and universities. All accessible by wide roads, far from the image of metropolitan areas, congested by overpopulation and a road network on the verge of suffocation. These images are reminiscent of the new capital of Myanmar, Naypyidaw a city that has also earned the nickname Ghost Town, partly because of its oversized 20-lane highways, which are completely deserted. By the way, if you're interested in the history of this city, I invite you to take a look at my episode dedicated to its fascinating history. But let's get back to Arkadag. Here, the city has been designed to provide a wide range of social infrastructures, including kindergartens, an urban amusement park, and many other facilities designed to improve the quality of life of its residents. To revitalize the region and create jobs, 130 hectares of new industrial zones are also planned, mainly for companies in the medical and agri-food sectors. Stretching over 950 hectares and built in less than five years, the city is intended to be a high-tech showcase, according to official communications. It is to offer electric transport solutions, road signage, and even intelligent parking lots. A dense fiber-optic network has been installed for the 70,000 inhabitants who will be living here. Various elements of the city, such as road signs, are managed and controlled remotely. From housing to urban infrastructure, every aspect of life in Arkadag is being digitized. This digital transformation is aligned with Turkmenistan's digital economic development concept for 2025, which emphasizes the integration of artificial intelligence as a way of life. According to the UN, the city must integrate advanced technologies such as the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, and data analytics to optimize city services. Intelligent traffic management systems and predictive maintenance solutions must be implemented to improve efficiency and reduce energy consumption. Of course, this increased digitalization raises questions about mass surveillance and respect for citizens' privacy especially in an authoritarian country that is closed to the outside world, with its population held by an iron fist. According to Reporters Without Borders, the country ranks at the very bottom of the Index for Freedom of Expression, just ahead of North Korea, Eritrea and Iran. Although the city emphasizes its robust cybersecurity measures to protect private information, the debate over the pros and cons of such surveillance continues to be a matter of concern for its future residents. The authorities are also introducing a democratic novelty in the way the city is managed. According to the UN, an inclusive decision-making process will enable residents to play an active part in shaping the city's development. Regular public meetings, citizen feedback mechanisms and digital platforms should enable a transparent and collaborative approach to governance. 
a statement that has yet to be confirmed by actions in a country where the last legislative elections were held without any opposition party with the victory of the party of the former president's son. Another aspect highlighted was the city's ecological impact. Apparently concerned about the environment, Turkmenistan wanted to show its know-how in this field by prioritizing ecology and sustainability. A great deal of effort has gone into designing eco-friendly buildings, and the town of Arkadag is to offer electric cabs and buses. Numerous green spaces are also planned. In addition, renewable energies are to be at the heart of the city's energy mix, and promises have been made to develop waste-to-energy initiatives. Nevertheless, the country remains one of the world's biggest gas exporters. It has the fourth largest proven natural gas reserves in the world. At the same time, the state is also the world's biggest emitter of methane, a gas that is far more harmful to the environment than carbon dioxide. Arkadag was originally the brainchild of the current president's father, Gurbangali Berdimukhamedov a man who ruled the country from 2007 to 2022 with total control over power. A personality cult enthusiast, he ordered the construction of a new city in 2019, a city dedicated to his glory as evidenced by the locality's name Arkadag, which means protector of the nation, one of the titles given to the former president. It's also the name given to several state-controlled media outlets and a soccer club. The club is made up of the country's best players who have been brought together in a single team. It's no coincidence that the inauguration took place on June 29th. This is the birthday of the former president who turned 66 this year. For those who are still in doubt, a huge 43-metre-high statue of the former dentist-turned-president stands in the middle of the city. All in gold, it depicts him on the back of a horse standing on its hind legs a posture reminiscent of Jacques-Louis David's painting of Emperor Napoleon on horseback. But beyond this cult of personality, this new city should enable Turkmenistan to revitalize its economy by generating employment, attracting foreign capital and boosting tourism. A first step towards diversifying its sources of income, which are largely dependent on the sale of hydrocarbons. Turkmenistan is pulling out all the stops to bring this project to fruition. Initially, construction was expected to cost around $1.5 billion, but in March 2023, a new official estimate put the cost at $5 billion. The first phase of the project is said to have cost $3.3 billion, with the second phase costing around $1.5 billion to complete the city, whose buildings are almost entirely white. An exorbitant sum for Turkmenistan, representing almost 10% of its GDP. But that's not all. One of the government's aims is to get the city into the Guinness Book of Records. For what reason, we don't yet know, except that the former president considers it to be the most beautiful, the most original, and the largest in the region. Turkmenistan is no stranger to the Guinness Book, as it already holds a number of records, especially in the country's capital, Ashgabat. These include the world's largest indoor Ferris wheel, 48 meters in diameter, the largest concentration of white marble buildings, and the largest star-shaped building in the world. As for the new town of Arkadag, it can pride itself on more than 21 international certificates. However, the country's population of over 6 million is unlikely to benefit from this technological breakthrough. Although the city will eventually be home to 70,000 people, hardly anyone lives there, according to AFP information gathered at the city's inauguration. In Turkmenistan, according to the latest estimates, almost 50% of the population lives below the poverty line. Thus, access to housing in this brand new city would be unaffordable for a large part of the population. Moreover, information is tightly controlled in this country, so it's hard to know what the real situation is today. Arkadag's impact on the economy also remains a big question mark. The economy remains essentially in the hands of the state, with a small share of the private sector, anti-competitive market structures, and, according to international observers, no access to external financing. 
What's more, the region does not benefit from a significant influx of tourists, and the construction of this new city is unlikely to change that. Only time will tell whether the region's tourism development will become a reality. But Arkadag is not an isolated case in Central Asia, as several forward-looking cities are also being considered in this part of the world. Asman City, for example, is intended to be the city of the future in Kyrgyzstan. Officially launched on June 30th, the city will be built on the shores of Lake Lesik, south of Almaty. Designed to eventually accommodate 700,000 people, it is expected to see the light of day by 2033. Estimated cost, $20 billion. Further west, Uzbekistan recently undertook a major urban project to expand and modernize its capital. Called New Tashkent, the construction of this vast urban extension was officially launched on March 18th by the head of state. This large-scale project aims to extend the capital to accommodate an additional 1 million inhabitants by 2045. The new Tashkent is part of a modern vision of urban planning with an emphasis on sustainability. For example, the public transport system will be equipped exclusively with electric buses. Free movement of pedestrians and cyclists will also be promoted. For the first time ever in Central Asia, a tri-generation power plant will even be built. It will generate electricity, heat buildings in winter, and cool them in summer. And that's not all. The new face of Tashkent aims to halve current water consumption and reuse treated wastewater to irrigate farmland. This ambitious goal is also reflected in the city's economic development. Ultimately, the expansion of Tashkent should create around 200,000 jobs in the technological innovation sector. A new business center is even planned, with several modern skyscrapers. All right, that's the end of the story for today. I hope you enjoyed this new episode, and if you did, feel free to give a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and see you soon on Looking 4.